The most retweeted tweet ever had 3,639,003 retweets. For a reference, that is larger than the entire population of the state of Kansas. This tweet was all about succulent chicken nuggets. Everyone is familiar with the Wendy's Twitter account, but not everyone is familiar with the person behind the tweets. We had the opportunity to sit down with the person behind the account, but we cannot reveal their identity. We distorted their voice to keep them anonymous, and here is the full interview. First of all, how did you get your job at Wendy's? Uh, I, I knew someone who worked uh, at our agency, uh, and they were looking for someone who knew about social media. Uh, so he suggested me. Um, I had a few pretty popular videos, and I knew what I was talking about in a time where advertising was really moving towards social media, and not everyone had a complete grasp on it yet. So they just kind of tested the waters and were like, you know what, let's let's give this guy a shot. Let's see how he does. It was a two-week trial period, and at the end of that, no one told me to go home. And so five years later, I'm still showing up, uh, and that's really how it happened. Can you describe your first tweet for Wendy's? I honestly wish I could tell you what my first tweet for Wendy's was. I'm sure it was really bad. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it was just something really dumb. Uh, but dumb is kind of what I like to do. Uh, yeah, I wish I could remember, honestly. Uh, I know the first, like, real campaign I worked with on Wendy's was our blue cheese cheeseburger, like, three years, like, on the actual Wendy's account. That was, like, the first one that I was, like, actually responding to people. So, it was something about blue cheese. Um. <laughs> what is the thought process behind each tweet? Uh, it really depends on the tweet. If it's a tweet about food, I mean, I need to know what goes on the food. I need to know everything about the food. If it's something asking about the company, I need to know our policies. But when it comes to, like, memes or popular culture or whatever, uh, the thought process is really just, do I understand it first? And if I don't, how fast can I Google it? And is it worth Googling it to respond to it? Um, but two, uh, it's just, if I do understand it, it's almost like not a thought process. It's just really conversational because someone will tweet like, you know, what's your favorite video game? And it's just how you would respond in real life. Like, I don't know, Zelda. Uh, and so uh, that's, I mean, the thought process is very conversational if it's not like an actual company response. So. And do you enjoy your job? Oh, yes, I do. Um, my job's great. I work with wonderful people, uh, and I, I mean, I legitimately get to mess around on the internet all day long. Like, there's not very many things that I could think of that would be better than that, so. And now tell me the story of what it was like when you got all the national attention when you first tweeted at the random person on Twitter. Uh, crazy. It, it really was because, I mean, we've been doing, we've been doing this for years now. And then when suddenly, like, all these national, like, news organizations are posting about the work you're doing, it's absolutely mind-blowing. And it just built and built and built. And then by the time that we had the most retweeted tweet ever be about our chicken nuggets, like, that still doesn't seem real. Like, that seems like a fake thing to say. Like, this is the most retweeted tweet ever. No, no one says that. That's not a real thing. That's an Ellen thing. But no, it's actually a Wendy's thing now. And, I mean, it really still hasn't, like, completely set in. Uh, but, I mean, it's fun. It's, it's crazy because I feel like people are watching at all times now. And they kind of are. Like, things just, it just keeps happening. But it's, it's awesome and crazy. What inspired you to start tweeting at random people and basically roast them? Um, the roasting came about just this year. Before that, we, we were always kind of like cheeky and snarky. We always had like that conversational tone, like we would be funny with people. The roasting came because people asked us to, uh, like because the the original refrigerator tweets were very sarcastic and people were like, oh, he got roasted. So from that, people just said, hey, Wendy's roast me, and so we, we just did. <laughs> we give them what they want. <laughs> and what is it like knowing you had the most retweeted tweet, but you were anonymous? Uh, that's crazy. Uh, it's kind of cool. Uh, I've, I've honestly almost just my whole life built this whole weird online reputation of stuff that people follow but have no idea that I'm the guy behind it and so it's really just kind of like the cap off of, of everything I've, I, 
I'd like to think I'm one of the most famous unknown people ever, <laughs> um, which is great. Like, it's it's crazy to think that that the most retweeted tweet ever, but no one really knows that I was, like, half of that. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool to just know that people are, like, looking at this stuff but have no idea you have it. Like, I, I mean, at least I can still, like, go outside and no one's like, that's the guy from the thing. Like... <laughs> How formal is it when you tweet? Is it from your phone or computer or anything else? Uh, it depends on the time. Uh, yeah, I I can tell you I tweeted to Nugs for Carter from my phone in the middle of the night. So uh, it just depends. Uh, yeah, like even right now, if I wanted to tweet, I could pull it up on my phone and do it from my phone, um, which is why it's fingerprint locked. <laughs> but uh yeah, I mean, most of the time it's through an actual, like, program that I have on my laptop. I've got double screens, I'm working on one, I'm doing other things on the other, and, uh, but I wouldn't say it's, like, super formal or anything. Uh, I don't, like, ask the client for permission for every single tweet. Some stuff, I'll be like, hey, can we say this? But overall, we've built this trust that really it's just, I'm there and I'm tweeting. And have you ever had someone tell you to turn it down a notch? Yes. Oh, definitely. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, we we, uh, we try to find the guardrails, and sometimes you either don't go far enough, sometimes you go a little too far. Uh, yeah, we have a meeting every single week where we talk about that. Like, if, if they're like, okay, this tweet, maybe that's a little too sassy, or maybe that's a little mean. Like, so, yeah, definitely, there's... There's tweets out there that you can find where maybe Wendy's went a little further than they should have, but, I mean, you know, if you don't make some mistakes, you're also not going to make the big wins, so. Next, what type of tweet is your favorite and why? I mean, the funny ones, for sure, uh, because those get the best reactions, but anything that lets me write something new. Like, uh, recently we had the Wingstop rap battle happen, and yeah, that was great because it was it was new. Like, we had done some rappy type, people were like, spit some bars, Wendy's, and we had done some little thing, but like, that was really like, and they fed into it and we got to go back and forth. Like, anything that keeps it fresh is what I mean fresh never frozen right no um but no anything that keeps it fresh is fun to do because you get the same questions hundreds of times over and over again so when someone gives you something new to work with like after all this time that's that's the best like yeah why do you do what you do uh well right now I still do what I do because I'm pretty good at it but <laughs> um uh I I I used to do stand-up comedy, uh, and I knew that replying to people and stuff was something that I could do well. Um, so when I got on the account, they had me work on what was just for the Baconator, a Twitter account for the Baconator. And just slowly, I kind of moved over and did the Wendy's account with one of our clients. And I just... I did a good job, so they just kept having me do it, and now I do it because it's fun. It's just really fun. <laughs> and do you do anything else besides the Twitter account? Uh, here, I do a lot of a lot of the writing for our social media posts. Um, I help with like when they're planning campaign type stuff. A lot of times, our creative people come over and talk to me and ask, you know, things like. Are they going to like this? Is there any other thought behind it? Um, or like when we do live event things, I just went and I got to sit in on the live event that we did with chicken tenders and got to tell them what to throw up on the screen as far as comments goes. Um, so I do a lot of writing on top of my writing. I do a lot of, I write a lot of stuff. <laughs> Finally, what would you tell someone who wants to try to market themselves on social media to build a prominent social media presence? Um, if it's like for an individual or even like an individual's business, I'd say you need to be consistent. Um, you need to, you just need to be yourself really. I mean, we're in this world where everyone wants attention right now. Every single person wants you to follow every account they have. So there's a lot of white noise out there. If you're yourself, you're unique, and you're putting out something of quality, eventually people are going to see that quality because we look through content all day long. And how often are you hiding someone on Facebook because they're sharing content that's just garbage? You don't want the garbage. You want quality content. And so... If you're putting out quality and but it's and it's unique to you and no one else is doing it, that's that's how eventually you're gonna win. 
All right, so special thank you to Christina Miller and everyone that helped to make this happen.